the anointing flows. Yeah. And Lord, that you would touch their hearts and that someone may hear and find you as their personal Savior today. Yeah. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Just before Wesley comes, I just want to say that my, my father, my dad, was a great dad. It wasn't always things that I agreed with my dad, but I followed his examples of reading the Word. I remember in his last few day, years how that I'd walk into their living room, and there he would, would be with his Bible in his lap. And I remember one time him saying to me, son, the thing that I love the most is God's Word. He said, I've read six chapters today. And I told him, I said, Dad, I don't think I read six chapters a day. And, you know, when we cherish our fathers, our dads, while they're alive, look at them respect them, love them, then when we're, they're gone to heaven. See, I, that's the way I look. My dad just transferred. Amen. He just transferred. Praise God. He's not, I don't look at him as dead. I think of him as being alive in heaven. And one day, I'm going to see him. One day, I'm going to say, if you're, you're Dad has passed on. Yeah. One day, one if he served Jesus, one day you're going to see him. Yeah. Praise God. And that's what we look forward to. Yeah. Praise the Lord. As Wesley comes to, wor to worship this morning, let's focus on the Lord this morning. Yeah. Let's worship the Lord and let him have his way and touch your heart this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Love me.
God. Praise God, the sweeter and sweeter he becomes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was thinking that Brother Chris, he had a tremendous lesson this morning. He was talking about the Word of God, and I thought how, how far I've come since I first accepted Christ and how much the Lord has taught me in His Word. By going to His Word, I never had the opportunity to go to a Bible school. But getting in the Word and reading the Word and taking it to the Lord in prayer and asking Him for wisdom in knowing how to apply the Word of God. And that's how we grow in the Lord. Amen. Get into the Word and find Him. Find the Lord. Find the author of the book. Amen. Closer and closer and we begin to understand Him anymore. But you'll never totally understand God. Praise God. And if you live to be 130, I don't believe you'd ever really know and understand fully God. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. This time we want to receive our morning tithes and offerings. And we have a, the basket that, down front. And if you can't get down here, I'm sure somebody would be, be glad to go down and, and receive the offering for you. Take it and bring it down here. But this time we want to receive it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity and the privilege that we have to worship you in our giving. Lord, we pray that you would just bless this offering and multiply it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
thing that we can all do uh, during this time we find ourselves in, not just as a nation, but in the world. And it's really mm -hmm. kind of simple. I learned this in Sunday school. I was probably, I don't know, no. My mom was my Sunday school teacher. It was a song we sing. This little light of mine.
I went under that bushel. No. I'm going to tell people about Jesus Christ yes. and how great and wonderful He is. Oh, amen. In fact, let's sing a little chorus here, Every Day with Jesus. Every day with Jesus.
love I am, I pour out pure love to everybody here. After you're all my children. And it's one sense. Well, you are all your children. Yeah, I know I will. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Anyone else want to say something? Well, I'll say he had a wonderful dad. He wasn't the Every one of you for praying for us. Praise God. I get teary eyed now, but I tell you. They, they say men don't no cry, but do they? No, no, no. <laughs> it is no secret. It is. and 
and from walking up and down in it. And then over in chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it says, And again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to, unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered, The Lord had said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the, in the earth, a perfect an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth or hateth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movedest me against him, to destroy him without cause. I want to speak for a little while this morning on the subject, Job, our example, and how to be a hero and a role model as a father. Let's go to Lord, we ask you right now to have your way this morning in this service, oh Lord God. We want you to just move, oh God. Lord, I'm not here to hear myself talk, Lord God, but I'm here to present you, Lord. Present the subject, oh Lord God. And I pray for your anointing, oh Lord. God will give it the glory and the praise and the honor forevermore. Amen. Amen. It's good to See you all of the smiling faces we have here this morning. And it's good to see all of you out there by internet. Hopefully you're having a good Father's Day. And uh, pray that uh, this word will be something that will be good for your heart. Now how do we pick hero, your heroes? Who are the role models that we should imitate? These, these questions aren't always easy to answer. In the old westerns, you always knew the good guys wore the white hats. Or were names you recognized as the good guys. I don't know, not, probably not any of you would watch westerns when you were growing up. I still watch them. Yeah. <laughs> the old ones. But the, the good guy always seemed to wear the white hat. Yep. And, and he never did anything wrong. Much. <laughs> Praise God. But you know, there was good examples. They tried to set a good example in the Westerns back then. And and so, but but really, there's a better one that we can go to. It's called the Word of God that can give us yeah. some, some good examples. Once again, I ask you these questions. How do you pick a hero? Where are the role models we should imitate and encourage our children to imitate? Now let's go to God's word for that. First of all, where are the fatherly heroes and role models like Job? How, but how do you pick a hero to imitate today? Where are the role models? We can and must apply these issues to our spiritual lives and the matter of eternal life. First, have you considered Job and his spiritual character? Job 1, 8 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth or hateth evil. And then over in Job 2 and 3 again, says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth or hateth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. True spirituality is a matter of inner holiness. You cannot be a spiritual person without having an inner holiness in you. You've got to allow Jesus or the Holy Ghost to do something special in your life. You know, it's just one thing to believe that there is a God, like Sister Brother, Sister, yeah, Brother Chris said this morning. Uh, it's one thing to believe there is a God, but it's another thing is to have it in your heart. Amen. Amen. 
I, I've met a lot of people through the years that believe that there was a higher power or a God, but they really did not know him personally as their personal Savior. You see, this is why one of the things that I, I, I think that uh, would be good for a Christian father or for a father is to have that kind of love for God, yeah. a personal love for God. Now, not everybody, not every man that's a good man is, is a godly man. I'm not knocking God, uh, good men, but I'm talking about a spiritual, spiritual thing here this morning. It begins within and it extends far beyond the attitudes and the actions we d demonstrate to our peers in church services. You know, I've seen people that, will act, that seem to be holy that came to church, then when they got out of church, they wasn't so holy. You see, a true man of God, or a true woman of God, whichever it may be, but we're talking about men this morning, uh, a true godly father would show the examples of God in and out of church. Now, I understand that there's times that we make mistakes. There's times that we make mistakes but we need to just say, Lord, forgive me. Yes. Repent it. And say, Lord, I, I, I didn't mean to, to get angry. Or I didn't mean to do this or do that. But say, Lord, I want to be your child. Amen. And I want to do what you want me to do. I remember when I was younger, I used to speak before I thought. And, and so sometimes you get in trouble when you speak before you think. And, uh, but, but I have asked the Lord through the years to help me to be wise. And not even now sometimes I blow it. But I've asked him to help me to be wise. And help me to be understanding. And help me to help other people. Even if I don't agree with them. Right. Help them spiritually, I mean. As far as I goes. I may not like the things that they do. My uh, one of my grandchildren. I've been praying for that that child for quite a while lately. And she said, and excuse me, <laughs> the person says things on the internet that I don't particularly like to hear. But I that every once in a while the Lord gives me a chance to say, Grandpa loves you, and is praying for you. And, uh, and and that's what we have to do. We just have to not chew them out, but say, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And, and it, the, I remember the old saying, used to catch more fire by honey than uh, whatever, than vinegar. And so I'm going to try to catch as many flies as I can with the honey. But the daughter brought me some honey today, so. <laughs> But I'm talking about spiritual life. <laughs> Praise God. The Lord wants us to do what we can to win the loss of Jesus. And a good father will try to be wise and try to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to be number one in his life. And try to allow the Lord to lead him and guide him. Spirituality is more than simple obedience and good behavior. It is a continuing growth in the Spirit. A continuing growth in the Spirit. Peter said, but grow in the grapes or unmerited faith and knowledge or, or, or knowing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Uh, Peter said, grow in grace. And in knowledge or understanding. This passage points out very specifically the source of anyone's spirituality. Growing grace. Uh, Lord, help me to, to grow. And Lord, just put your knowledge into my heart and help me to be the person you want me to be. When the Lord brought Job to Satan's 
attention. He pointed out four specific aspects of spiritual character or good qualities found in this man of God. <clears throat> he began with the characteristics of blamelessness or perfection. This characteristic needs to be understood as allowing nothing in our outward activities and internal disposition to be in opposition to God. Listen to that. The characteristics need to be understood as allowing nothing in the outward activities and internal disposition to be in opposition to God. In other words, when you, when, when you get up in the morning and say, Lord, don't let me do something that I shouldn't do today. Lord, help me be the person, the godly man or person that you want me to be. Help me be what you want me to be today. And I try my best every day just to ask the Lord to help me. Lord, help me to be what you want me to be. Yes. He began with the characteristics of blamelessness, I said, or perfect, perfection. The, the scripture does not say that Job had never sinned before or that he would be completely sinless in the future. But by striving to serve God, he was found acceptable in the Lord's sight. You know, nobody's perfect. But God does want us to strive daily to be as close to God as we can. Yeah, if we're doing everything that we know, Brother Phillips, to be close to God, then we're doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah. If we're calling out to God and saying, Lord, I need your help. Yeah. I'm not always where I need to be with you, Lord. But I want to be with you every day, Lord. Yeah. And if I mess up today, I pray, Lord, that you would help me not to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord continued with a characteristic of uprightness or honesty. <clears throat> Job was a person who was ethically upright. He treated people fairly and could be trusted to do what he said. Can we say that about ourselves? I hope we can. The Lord continued with the characters of rightness or honesty. Can we be, be, can somebody say that you're an honest person? Amen. Amen. Uh, and Job was a person that was ethically upright. He treated people fairly. If we want to be treated fairly, we need to treat other people fairly. Amen. And could be trusted to do what he said. And how many people are, can you trust to do what they say today? Not as many as I wish to. Praise the Lord. Now, now, God was willing to let me wait on the honey and give it to me anyway. <laughs> but I said, no, I'll just go ahead and give you the money. <laughs> Praise God. No, he, he was fair. Praise God. There is no shortage of role models. <laughs> but we have to look in the right direction. A good place for all of us to start in the Word it is in the Word of God. Amen. Father's Day is a wonderful time to give special attention and honor to our first and, four, and most often foremost role model dads. And as we know, so many times, many children do not have their role model around. I don't care what nationality you what race you are. There's a lack of fathers in the Amen. nation today. Yes, there is. Amen. In, in, in your search for a biblical role model, have you considered Job? In the middle of Job 1 and 8, it says, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? He was talking to Satan, but I want to ask you, have you considered our serv my servant Job? Though we know of Job and the heartaches he endured as proof of his devotion. How many could go through all the things that Job went through in his trials and still come out serving the Lord? To me, that's a sign to me that, there, that he was a dedicated man of God. That he was dedicated no matter what. In fact, in one place he says, no matter what, I'm going to serve you all. Amen. Amen. 
And, and I'll tell you what, this is what we need to have in our hearts, men, that I'm going to serve you. And Christians here today, I'm going to serve you no matter what comes about Amen. in my life. Though we know Job and the heartaches that he went through as proof of his devotion, to his God, his story isn't usually a favorite Bible study topic. Where are the fatherly heroes like Job? Yet there are three principles from his life which deserve our attention. Let's look at Job's spiritual character as a hero and robot. The word character means moral trait, or can mean good qualities. Another of Job's spiritual characteristics was his awe. That word awe means reverential fear. Uh, that not, we, we're not we're afraid of God, but we have a, a reverence upon him. We, uh, reverence uh, is, is something that we, we just look at him and just don't want to mess up. We just want to love God with all of our heart. Job feared God, but he was not afraid of him. He stood in awe of God's power and position and was a friend of the Lord's. However, God was never a good buddy or the big guy upstairs. Have you ever heard that? The big guy upstairs yeah. to him? Job understood the power of his God, the creator of all things, who daily performed wonders which mankind cannot have. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures out of Job, of Job 5 and Job 9. And I'm going to give you 9 through 16 in chapter 5. And he says in the Amplified Version, Who does great things and, and unsearchable, marvelous things without number? Who gives rain upon the earth and sends water upon the fields? So that he sets on high those who are lowly. And those who mourn, he lifts to safety. He frustrates and devises the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise or anything of lasting worth. He catches the so-called wise in their own trickeries. And the counsel of the schemers is brought, uh, brought, to, brought to a quick end. In the daytime they meet in darkness, and at noon they grow as in the night. But God saves the fatherless from the sword of their mouths, and the needy from the hand of the mighty. So the poor have hope, and iniquity shut her mouth. And over in chapter 9, verse 9, 2 through 10 says, I know it is true, but how can mortal man be right before God? If one should want to contend with him, he cannot answer one of his questions in a thousand. God is wise in heart and mighty in, in strength. Who has ever hardened himself against him and prospered or even been saved? God, who removes the mountains, and they know it not, when he overturns them in his anger, who shakes the earth out of its place and the pillars of its, of its tremble, tremble, who commands the sun and it rises not, who seals up the stars from you, who alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the waves and high places of the sea, who made the constellations, the bear Orion, and the loose cluster Poseidus, and the vast starry spaces of the south. Who does great things past finding out? Yes, marvelous things without number. Job knew that wisdom, power, and counseling, understanding are all from God. Job 12, 13 says, but only with God are perfect wisdom and mind. He alone has true counsel and understanding. Job's final characteristic provided to Satan by the Lord was that he shunned 
evil or hating evil. Spiritual believers should avoid the areas of temptation which may hinder or destroy their testimony. Yeah. I, I don't want anybody to ever look on me as somebody that allows evil in my life. I want to be a person that people know that I desire to shun evil in my life. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul provided a directive for all of us. And over 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, in the New King James, it says, Abstain from every form of evil. Abstain from every form of evil. Uh, what are the quality role models with character or good qualities? Thirdly, let's look at Job's personal integrity as a hero and role model. The word integrity means honesty or sincerity which means freedom from lying. God said, have you considered Job's personal integrity? Over Job 2 and 3 in the Amplified it says, And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who reverently fears God and abstains from and shuns all evil because it is wrong. And still he holds fast his integrity, although you moved me against him to destroy him without cause. Integrity is a matter of truth. To become a person of integrity, one, must, one needs success, access to the truth. Without the foundation, no one can live a blameless life before God. The truth is right here found in this word. Amen. Without the truth, how are we going to know integrity? Yeah. I mean, I've heard, I've heard being honest preached all my life. But it's even better when I read it in God's word. Yeah. Then I know without a shadow of a doubt that's what God's word says. Yeah. And, and I want to be an honest person. And I, 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 I'll try, I always try my best, and I'm sure Brother Phillips has too, to be an honest person. Mm -hmm. yes. And a person that wants to do the right things. Job's successful living can be attributed to his knowing all that he could about God. His power, his role on earth, and his personal requirements for his children. The three friends who came to visit thought they were being honest. But they were not aware of all that had taken place. In fact, they, they thought, man, he must have sinned with all the things coming against him. And they, 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 they were being honest in their own way, but they didn't know the truth. So it's better not to say you, you've sinned unless you know they see it. <laughs> so pray for them and ask God to help them. If a person's doing everything he knows to do and still calamity comes against him, it's not because that person is a sinful person necessarily. It's because God has allowed us to go through trials. And there's been times that I, that in Florence have been through trials and tribulations. <laughs> Many times. But because I know Jesus and she knows Jesus, we've always stuck it out. Amen. And God always brings us through. Oh, yeah. Integrity or our honesty reveals itself most fully when we tell the truth. Even when it hurts or places us in an uncomfortable position. And I know sometimes I've had to tell the truth and I didn't enjoy having to tell it because I knew it put me in a position to where somebody would get angry at me. <laughs> but I thank God that God always brought us through that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Integrity is a matter of trust. 
even while Joseph's entire world was crumbling around him, he continued to trust God. All his possessions were gone. All the children were dead. His body was painfully afflicted with boils. <clears throat> I know none of us would like to go through that. But if we did, would we still hold on to God? That's something we need to ask ourselves. In Job 2, 7 and 8, in the Amplified, said, in the Amplified it says, So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with loathsome and painful sores from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. And he took a piece of broken pottery with which to scrape himself. And he sat down among the ashes. That would be an awful bad thing. I mean, the sores, I, mean, I can just about imagine they, all, they hurt and they itch, they itch too. It would be an awful thing to have them kind of things happen to you. But then he still stayed faithful to God. His wife rejected his position of trust in the Lord and suggested he curse God and die. Job 2.9 Facing all these calamities, Job repeatedly responded with a testimony of trust. He said in Job 19, 25, and 26, Amplified, For I know that my Redeemer and Vindicator lives, and at last he, the last one, will stand upon the earth. And after my skin, even this body has been destroyed, then from my flesh, or without it, I shall see God. He said, even though that I die today, more or less, I will see God. No matter what happens to this body, Amen. I will see God. Yes. Integrity is a matter of treatment. Integrity reveals itself in the way that we treat our neighbors. Yes. Job appears to have been especially sensitive to the needs of a the underprivileged and the hurting, his friend knew of his works. His friends knew of his works. Job 4, 3 and 4, and the Amplified State says, Behold, you have instructed me. That's what the friend said. And you have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have held firm him who was followed. And you have strengthened the feeble knees. So he was a man that would, that would encourage people and lift them up and do things he, that he could to help them. And then Job himself personally listed the areas in which he had a help, which included charity for the, for the poor, orphans, widows, dying, and oppressed. Job 29 and 12 through 17, and the Amplified says, Because I delivered the poor who cried, the fatherless, and him who had none to help him. The blessing of him who was about to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me, or clothed itself with me. My justice was like a robe, and a turban, or a diadem, or a crown. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor and needy. The cause of him I did not know. I searched out. I searched out. And I broke the jaws or the teeth of the unrighteous and plucked the prey out of his teeth. Where are the fathers of integrity today? And then lastly, let's look at Job's family concerns, which made him a hero and role model. God said, have you considered Job a father with family concerns? Job's spiritual care for him, for his family, was especially visible in the care he took for his sons and daughters. Notice the great spiritual care Job exhibited in Job 1 and 5. And when the day of their feasting were over, Job sent for, his, for, the, uh, for them to purify and to hallow them. 
and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, I may be, it may be, that my sons have sinned and cursed or disowned God in their hearts. Thus did Job all at all such times. After uh, special feast, he made sure each one of his children went through the spiritual purification. Job offered a burnt sacrifice for each son and daughter. All of this was uh, precautionary, lest they may have sinned in their hearts. Now, in contemporary times, Job would be called an intercessor, constantly praying and seeking God for the spiritual welfare of each of his children, even though they were grown. And, 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 and people, I know that all of you pray for your children. Even though they are grown. And say, Mom and Dad, I don't need your advice. I'm, I'm worldly and I've got all the understanding that I need. But we still pray for them. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know if all your children do that. I know, I know all, all, all young kids and young children get to the place where they know more than Dad and Mom. Yeah. And so, so we pray for them. We pray desperately for them every day and say, Lord, help my children. Help them to grow in you. Not that they cannot grow. They can. And, and, but, but it's our job still is when our children are 50 and 60 years old and we're up in our hundreds, uh, we still ought to pray for them. Yeah. I don't care what age our children are, us as parents ought to pray for our children. That God would help them and God would help them to be wise in everything Amen. that they do. Amen. So, notice he didn't just talk about them, about spiritual matters. He didn't just suggest some possibilities for their spiritual well being. Instead, he carefully and personally involved himself in their spiritual lives. This final principle which we apply specifically to dads is a natural succession of the first. A person of spiritual character will be a person of integrity. A dad of integrity will involve, be involved in the spirituality of his family. Amen. And I've always tried to help my children in their spirituality. I've always prayed for them Always, sometimes, maybe I sounded a little bit too pushy. But my heart has always been in the right direction, uh, in the right place. And I've always wanted to be a help. And I'm glad that my children are, are involved in church today. And I know that Brother Phillips' children are too. And we all uh, have children that are working for the Lord. And, but I don't have some that do. I have some grandchildren that don't serve the Lord. And I'm praying for them every day. God will bring them to the understanding of what they need in their life. Fathers, I just want to challenge you to pray for your children and to do whatever you can to help them to come to know Jesus Christ more, more perfectly if, if they're already have children that, that love the Lord. So this is what I have to say this morning. Anyone need prayer this morning before that we uh, say our dismissal prayer? Sister Alma. Sister Alma. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you leaving tomorrow? We leave on Tuesday. Let's pray. I, mean, I just uh, pray that uh, all you men will have a great day today Amen. with your children, if you're able to be with your children. If not, that you'll have a great day with your wife. Amen. Let's, let's all stand and we'll be dismissed. But if anyone need prayer, I don't want to dismiss without me to ask if you need prayer personally. Yeah, and Chris. Okay, let's remember all these requests. Lord, we just pray.
that you remember all these requests this morning, uh, Cindy's Aunt Chris, Lord, and all the other ones that need prayer, and Alma, Lord, and all the ones that are not able to be here today, uh, Sister Bob, Sister, and, uh, and, and, and the other ones, and we're glad that Sister Carol was able to make it today, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you keep your hand on each one of them, Lord. And I pray that, God, that you would be with your fathers today. Lord, you're, our, you're the number one Father. You're our Heavenly Father. Oh, God, we just give it the glory. Lord, go with us today, Lord God. Keep your hand on us, O oh God, and help us to have a good time together. And God, we give you the glory and the praise and the honor in your holy name. Amen. 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 Now, don't forget, there's no service tonight because of Father's Day. Yes, Mr. Can we say happy birthday to Legion and meet you? Oh, yes. Uh, let's play happy birthday to Legion. And, uh, He's downstairs, but.